So the next thing that I'm going to have a look at then is cloning. Okay, so this image here is called B.W. Hall. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to recommend that A, I zoom in to the area that I want to work upon. Because if we don't zoom in and we start working at this area, it's going to be very fiddly. You're going to miss things. Okay, you may leave parts of the sign in when you don't mean to. The second thing that we're going to do as well is use a brush that's big enough for the size. And if you're cloning stuff in, I really do recommend soft edges. Okay, the last thing that you want is to see the edges of the brush and it looks pockmarked. So to zoom in, and everybody can do this here whenever you're doing it at home, if you use Control Plus, okay, to zoom in, or Control Minus to zoom out, if you need it to fit your screen, you do Control Zero. So it doesn't matter if it's large or small. It's Control Zero to fit your screen, and it's for any size of screen. And whenever we're zoomed in, to pan around, instead of looking at this geezer's knees, okay, we want to look at the plinth. If you hold down the space bar on your keyboard, you get a little hand cursor. That means that your current tool that you're using will be interrupted, and you can then click and drag and navigate to the area that you want to work with. And whenever you let go of the space bar, you're back to whatever tool that you were on. Okay, so it just interrupts things momentarily. If I just do my a tad there. So we're going to use the clone stamp. Now, whenever I'm doing these sessions, because I'm using a two column toolbar, I like to call it a left column and a right column. And if you count the rows in the toolbar from top to bottom, there's 11 rows. So the rubber stamp or the clone stamp tool can be found on the left side and it's the fifth one down, left five. And if I click and hold on that, because there's a little button down in the bottom right or a little mark, if I click and hold my mouse on that, there's further options to be had on all of these little buttons that have a little arrow down in the bottom right. So you have 22 currently visible tools, and depending on the version of the software, another 20 to 30 tools that you don't currently see. Okay, so I'm going for the F5 for the clone stamp option one, which is the normal clone stamp, not the pattern clone stamp. Otherwise, you end up with wacky results. And whenever I bring my cursor over to the image, that circle is the size of the brush. If I want to make the brush larger, the long way round is come up to your options bar, hit the little arrow to get the drop down. So we have all different types of brush tip shapes. Okay, and what you're aiming for is a soft brush. So this one here that I'm hovering over at the minute, that has a defined edge, so that's a hard brush. Whereas the one beside it does not have a defined edge, therefore that is a soft brush. However, if I click on a hard brush, I can take the hardness down from 100% where it has a defined edge, down to 0% where it has a soft, non-defined edge, and that way you have soft edges where your edges can overlap for blending purposes. What I would recommend as well, whenever I say to folk initially, use a bigger brush, they will turn around and move the size of the brush in older versions of the software. This is called master diameter. It's always the top slider. They will make the size of the brush nice and large, and then they'll click on a brush tip type. And that one there is only 33 pixels across. And if you look at your diameter or your size, you'll see that that little slider has gone down to the left again. The best advice I can give you is choose the tip shape first and then size it up. Don't size it and then choose a different tip. Okay, so I'm going back to my 55 and I'm making that larger. And that is now the size of the brush, that big circle. If you don't see the circle, if you only see a crosshair, it's because your caps lock is on or your brush is only one pixel in size, either or. If you know that you've got a brush which is many pixels in size, check your caps lock, switch it off, and get the size of your circle. So I'm just going to take that back down. Okay, now at the moment, I'm on my rubber stamp tool. I've just opened an image. If I click my mouse, and again, many of you will do this, whenever I click my mouse, you get this here little dialog box saying that you can't clone because you haven't copied. We need to be able to pick up a copy of a good area to paste in over the copy of a bad area. And to do that, if you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, you'll see there that the cursor changes from a circle to a little target. That target is the cursor that you need to be able to click. Okay, and that will take a copy of wherever you click 
and put that on the clipboard. So because my brush is quite large, I'm just going to take that down in size a little bit. And I'm using keyboard shortcuts. Typically, you guys would use the little drop down and use the size or the master diameter slider. If you are interested in keyboard shortcuts, it's the left square bracket on your keyboard to make your brush smaller and the right square bracket on your keyboard to make it larger. OK, so whenever I alt and I get the target, I'm taking a copy of the black plinth because those are good pixels. So whenever I click, I then let go of the alt. You do not click again until you get your cursor onto the sign. Now, what's wrong with that brush? It's too hard. It's too hard. Okay, so I need to soften up the edge of that brush. Okay, this is what I was telling you that you don't want. So whenever I click the down arrow, take the hardness from 100% down to zero. Now, whenever I put it on there, it looks physically smaller. Okay, but that's because the softness is on the outside of the brush edge. So in CS6, you get a preview inside the circle of where you're about to paste. Prior versions, you do not have that luxury. Okay, so whenever I hold down the mouse, see that little cross? That's where I'm copying from. And the circle is where I'm pasting to. And I have a problem with my brush. It's not the right type of brush for the job. It's probably the same one. Let's try that one. That's better. Okay. So what you guys need to do is make sure that you keep an eye on that cross and where it's going to. Because if that cross goes off the plinth, it paints in what it goes over. Okay. The other thing is as well, and let me just put that back. So I've just F12 to revert it. If... On one mouse stroke, okay, so if I hold down the mouse and I do all of this painting, this is something else that you need to consider. So if I keep going up and down here and cover that sign, and on one mouse stroke, once that cross hits where the sign began previously, you start painting the sign in again, because that's what the cross sees. If this happens to you, it's time to let go of that mouse stroke, okay? Let those pixels drop and stick. And the next time you hold down your mouse, it picks up the ones that you've just painted in. Now, another thing that people seem to do is they keep going on with the same sample forever. You really do need to take samples little and often. And if I just demo this a little bit differently, if I was to take a sample from there, and if I start painting that in, even though I get to the plinth, and then I start painting it in again, and again, and again, and again, what's happening here? The floors are going off, but you start seeing a replication or a pattern happening there, okay? So it's one of the things that happens all too often. People seem to take a sample from one area. They keep going back to the same area, okay? So a pattern will develop. If you take a sample from here one time and here another time and elsewhere and you build that up, you will be pattern-free. And the last thing that you really, really, really want is for somebody to look at your image just going... That's cloned. Okay, you want to make it as flawless as possible, essentially. Okay, so again, I'm just going to F12 that. You can use the clone stamp to cover things up. You can also use the clone stamp to duplicate. So you could have twins or something going on there. I can also use the clone stamp to clone from one image to another. The problem with this is then, say that we're putting a person from one photograph into another. If we take the person out of a photograph where they're the only person in the photograph and put them into a group photo, they're going to be massive. Okay, they're not going to fit the image proportionally. The other side of things is as well then, if once we get them in, because I've done this on the Santa, and Santa is on one layer, I can't scale Galileo down. Okay, it's on the same layer. However... If I take a new layer, which is down here, you'll see that a layer one comes in, which is like a sheet of acetate on top of the photograph. And now whenever I start putting the thinker in, I'll just do it rather quickly here. Because he's on a separate layer, first of all, he can be switched on and off, or off and on. And again, because he's on a layer, whenever I go to the move tool, I can shift them about. 
And if I need to size them up, I can do an edit, transform and scale, which gives me a set of handles. And if I drag him in on himself, he gets smaller or outwards, he gets larger. To maintain proportion, if you hold down your shift key while you use a corner handle, has to be a corner, folks. So you can maintain aspect ratio and you can make them whatever size that he needs to be. And to get rid of the handles, just hit return on your keyboard to confirm or if you want to cancel it, press escape. Now, because there's two layers there, whenever I go to file and save as, it automatically comes up as a PSD version because it thinks that you want to save the layers separately. In order to make that a JPEG, you just click the PSD format and you go to your JPEG. And again, you rename. So I'm going to make this here today's date plus an A. And then whatever is seen on screen will squish into one layer as your output JPEG file. And you still run through the same quality option conventions where you make sure that your JPEG quality options is a 12 and then you click your OK button.